New details being released in the mass shooting in Buffalo, New York, and the deadly shooting in California. We'll have the latest in your 9 at 9 plus. Receiving a care package means getting a piece of home for deployed service members. Coming up, how you can get involved and bring a smile to a soldier's face. And we have a behind the scenes look at Lynn Manuel Manranda's newest show that's here in San Antonio. And the heat continues unseasonably hot around here for the month of May. Any relief in sight? What about a chance of storms? We'll check in with Sarah, who's in for Justin. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Feels like a Monday for some of us, but it is Tuesday. Good morning, everybody. It is May 17th. Thanks for joining us. Welcome back, Mark. Thank you. Big graduation weekend with my son. Uh, we'll have more on uh, your forecast coming up right here on GMSA at 9. That's right. Well, congratulations. Thank and, you. And for now, let's look at today's 9 at 9. More details being released in the mass shooting in Buffalo, New York. New documents suggest the 18-year-old suspect planned the shooting at least two months ago and planned it down to which supermarket aisles he was going to target. He also listed two more possible locations to go after the Topps friendly market. Today, President Biden is traveling to western New York to meet with the families of the victims who died in Saturday's attack. Authorities in Southern California say the shooting at a Taiwanese church Sunday was a politically motivated attack. They say 68-year-old David Chow drove from Las Vegas to Orange County and was motivated by hatred against Taiwan. Tensions between China and Taiwan are at the highest in decades. The Orange County Sheriff's Office also said he chained some of the doors closed and placed incendiary devices around the building. A number of companies and government agencies say they're now employing new strategies to ease the nation's baby formula shortage. The Justice Department has asked a court to approve a consent decree. It would reopen an Abbott formula plant with FDA supervision. The American Academy of Pediatrics is also offering emergency feeding recommendations. It says most babies older than six months can have up to 24 ounces of whole cow's milk a day. The Biden administration is reinstating the Cuban Family Reunification Parole Program and increasing visa processing. It is also lifting the family remittance cap of $1,000 per quarter. That means more money can be donated to support Cuban entrepreneurs and expand their businesses. Alec Baldwin's co-producer on the film Rust says he is confident they will be able to finish the film once the investigation is complete. Cinematographer Helena Hutchins was shot and killed in October on the set when a firearm held by Baldwin went off as they were rehearsing a scene. Last month, New Mexico regulators fined the movie production nearly $137,000 for safety violations. The FDA is expected to authorize Pfizer COVID booster shots for children ages 5 to 11 as early as today. Pfizer requested emergency use authorization for its boosters at the end of April. The company claims its data showed a third vaccine dose raised Omicron fighting antibodies by 36 times in those ages 5 to 11. This comes as a new report finds COVID cases among children increased for the fifth week in a row. The CDC is now urging all domestic travelers to consider taking a COVID test before their trip. Previous recommendations suggested tests did not have up-to-date COVID vaccinations. According to the new guidance, the agency recommends getting tested no more than three days before your trip, but they really want the test to happen as close to the time of departure as possible. Another mixed day for the markets. Investors heading into trading today after a sell-off cut 0.4%. gaining 0.1% at the closing bell. Some traders worried to rush up more than 33 years after the first Golden Arches went up there. The company closed nearly 850 restaurants and sell them all off. McDonald's saying it no longer is consistent with the values to stay in Russia after the invasion of Ukraine. And that's today's 9 at 9. And taking a look outside with live cam, it's pretty out there. You may not be able to tell at this exact moment, but we're going to have another hot, hot day. <laughs> 
We certainly are, Stephanie. We're going to have another day where we're going to be challenging a record high. Now, when we look at the aquifer, there's actually not been a change to the aquifer level in the last 24 hours, but we're still some 20 plus feet below the monthly average. So the aquifer could use a drink of water. When we look at the pollen count, it's not too bad. Molds, grass, and pecan, the only allergens present, and they are all low. Let's take a moment and let's look outside right now. And you can see blue skies. Those morning clouds have cleared 75 degrees. Southeast winds at about 10 miles per hour, and it's a little muggy out there right now. Today we're going to have a mix of uh, mostly clear to partly cloudy skies with some cirrus clouds working in above head. But the biggest impact to your day is going to be that it's hot. 98 degrees for the forecast high temperature that may beat the record set back in 2013 of 97. South winds will gust up to about 25 miles per hour, so it's going to be hot uh, and breezy. Elsewhere, 100 in Hondo, 100 in Pleasanton, 98 in New Braunfels, 97 in Kerrville, 103 in Del Rio. We need some relief from the heat, and there's a glimmer of hope over the weekend for not only a shot at a cool down, but also some, a shot at some rain. So I've got a look ahead coming up in a bit. Thank you, Sarah. Folks, if you can avoid I-35 at Judson Road for a little while longer right now, we've got slowdowns in both directions. Looks like we've got an accident southbound. I've also seen one on the frontage road out, out there. But for example, I-35 at uh, Judson is backed up all the way to near Shirts. Northbound 35 backed up almost to loop 410. Give yourself an extra 15 to 20 minutes to get through this part of town. Otherwise, uh, try to go a little bit later on. In your morning headlines, a missing persons case over a decade old step, uh, one step closer rather to being solved and COVID detecting dogs. A peddling blood drive and a way to shorten your trip to the concession stand. David Sears is here to explain all of this. Good morning. Good morning. How many times you go to a ball game, you're standing at the concession stand in line wanting that hot dog and that drink and you hear and you go, oh man, I, just I missed, missed it. The home yeah. run. I missed How it. How did that happen? Yeah. They got a way to solve that problem for you. Okay. Get to that in just a second. But first, let's start with this. It is not unusual for murder cases to be solved, but 13 year old murder cases. That's the difference in this story. A 13 year old murder of a teenager in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, has taken a huge step towards an end. The remains of Brittany Drexel have been found. She was 17 years old when she traveled from her home in upstate New York to South Carolina for spring break in Myrtle Beach. And that is where she disappeared back in April of 2009. Police have found her remains in a wooded area. The man police suspected from the start has been arrested. Raymond Moody grabbed Brittany, sexually assaulted her, killed her, and then buried her body, according to police. They have not revealed how they figured out it was Moody, but they have charged him with obstruction of justice, murder, kidnapping, and first-degree criminal sexual conduct. I've been waiting for this day for 13 years. Uh, ever since the, you know, the day Brittany disappeared, I never thought we would get to this place. And we're finally here, and now I can get Brittany back and lay her to rest. Weighing this all out is tough on a dad, tough on a mother, but having faith and hope is what's going to guide us through the end result. Every police officer has that one case that frequents their every waking thought. This was that case for many people. Brittany would have been 30 years old. Her parents very thankful to law enforcement and they plan to take her back home, have a celebration of life and then lay her to rest. Where would we be without some of our canine companions? These four legged furry friends can sniff out bombs, drugs, trap victims in rubble of earthquakes. And now some dogs have been trained to sniff out COVID-19 and they are pretty accurate at it. The researchers trained four dogs to detect COVID-19 infections caused by the original strain. They use skin swabs. The dogs correctly identified 92% of the positive samples and 91% of the negative samples. Then they went directly to sniffing passengers at an airport. The dogs got it right on 98.7% of the time on negative samples. They missed on three positive cases, but there were not enough positive samples to get an accurate percentage. The study was done in Finland and it's been published in the journal BMJ Global Health. 
All right, I want to show you a different type of blood drive. Meet Bob Barnes. He is riding his bicycle across the entire country, making stops in all 50 states to donate blood or platelets. He was in Madison, Wisconsin yesterday. That is the 41st capital city he's been to. He is calling it the Great American Triple Switchback Tour. His mission is to raise awareness about the importance of giving blood and platelets, and he is putting his pedal where his mouth is. I don't have a lot of means financially, so it's something I can give. Uh, and I think that anybody that's eligible should give blood if they, if they are, because only 37% of the population is eligible to give blood, and only 6 to 7% of those actually do. So we got to bump that number up. Barnes has biked more than 12,000 miles so far. That leaves him about 3,500 more to go. His final donation will take place in Hawaii, and he's going to fly there. But he'll probably take a bike around the island or something. Probably. Yeah. Probably. Good place to do that. Yeah. yeah. And finally, you can call it ordering in or ordering out, depending on whether or not there's a roof on the ballpark you're at. The main thing, you no longer have to miss any action at the baseball field because you're standing in line for a hot dog, popcorn, or maybe a soda. Thanks to Uber Eats, they announced that people can use their app to order food from the concession stand right from their seat. You just put in your order with your seat location, and then you get your food from the closest concession stand. The app is going to show you wait times. When your food is ready, they'll let you know, and you just go pick it up real quick. Right now, the app only works in a few stadiums, including Minute Maid Park in Houston. Uber plans to expand to other stadiums in the future. And we wanted to point out one thing. We were, we were looking through the, uh, through the little app there. Yes, sir. There were some, like, extreme numbers on there. It looked like a burger was, like, 86 bucks, but I'm not sure that was right. Oh, I think it was wow. from, like, a, a, well, a order from town. Well, the other catch, too, is cell service is notoriously bad at a lot yeah. of sports That's venues. Oh, hopefully they And the, you'd be like, no, I'm over here. Uh, no, down one level. But it's to pick up. But it's to pick up. Pick so you up. just have to, so it'll let you know that your order's ready. Oh, gotcha. Okay, I thought run, they came you to you. You run up there, like, you know, during between innings. Okay. Oh. And you pick it up, then you run back to your seat you don't miss anything okay so, so there's ch still a chance you could miss wow maybe the how'd you do it <laughs> base hit yeah base hit sears thank you david <laughs> i guess it has to be a little louder for it to be a home run huh? <laughs> i think so. I guess so thank you david <laughs> Nine ten, right small bat small bat uh nine ten right now 75 degrees still ahead on gmsa at nine you can now sign up for the city's workforce training program and what you need to know and how it could better prepare you for your next job and when we come back how you can uh, help bring a smile to a soldier's face by creating a care package for them tiffany huertas is back from attorney leave good to see her we're going to join uh, with her coming up after the break and welcome back it's 913 a care package is a piece of home sent with lots of love to deployed service members and over the next few weeks you can help bring a smile to a soldier's face the nonprofit soldiers angels is having a collection drive to collect the top requested items and care packages for deployed u.s service members overseas tiffany huertas joins us live from soldiers angels hq to talk more about the go camo care package <laughs> collection drive boy that's a mouthful tiffany good morning tiffany so what <laughs> items are they it is good morning Good morning, it is, but this is such an important and special project that they have here, and it's always fun coming to the headquarters here. Just check it out. For three years, they've been doing this program, and we have this morning volunteers and staff from Soldiers Angels. They're putting together these packages with lots of love, and there's different items that they put in there. They have gum, they have hygiene sets, they even have puzzles so that they can just entertain themselves and have some downtime and just enjoy that. And we have this morning Chris and Rich to learn more about this. Good morning with Soldiers Angels. Chris, talk to us about how this all started. So this started three years ago. Um, we had a surge of deployments. And so we had a lot of requests for care packages. And at the time, we didn't have enough volunteers to meet that initial demand. So we created this program and we realized it would be great if we could get donations to help us uh, supply all of these items that deployed service members really need. Where are they going this year? So right now we have a surge because of the troops that are deployed to support Ukraine and worldwide. So that's where these uh, packages are going to go. They're going to go worldwide. Um, but we do have 384 care service members right now that are looking for adoption, which is another way that you can support deployed service members by going to our website and signing up to volunteer. 
and we actually are supporting more deployed service members this year than we have in the last seven years. And Rich, this hits home. Talk to us about this care package. When did you receive it and how was that feeling when you opened it? Yeah, it was, uh, I've, I've, uh, a veteran of both the wars in Afghanistan and Iraq, so I've been on the receiving end of many care packages, and I can tell you that it's a game changer for us. Um, our friends and family, they're force multipliers because over there we can be in some pretty rural areas, some pretty tough situations, and our friends and families are providing us with something that we don't, wouldn't have to worry about otherwise. So when we run out of something, our friends and family got our back, and they can provide us with things that everybody uses. So we sincerely appreciate it. How was that feeling when you opened your care package? It's wonderful. In fact, I still have the, the names of the, of the people that sent me the first care package, um, and I, I've held on to it ever since. How do you feel of it happening now to others, and it's all happening here in San Antonio? Yeah, I love it. I think it's so important, and I know the soldiers over there, the, the military folks over there, really appreciate it. Like I said, nothing goes to waste, and, and it's, it's so appreciated. Well, thank you both for your time and for your service. We really appreciate all and everything that you all do. And obviously the staff and volunteer, they're working hard this morning. Thanks guys for joining us. Um, we're gonna have all the details on KSAT.com and on the noon show. Back to you guys. Tiffany, a couple things real quick. I know charitable organizations that yes. want to get in community service hours can volunteer over there. And two, I didn't see you yesterday. I was out of town, but welcome back. How is the baby doing? <laughs> Oh, the baby's great. She's thriving. Sophia, Olivia, she's, you know, she's smiling all the time. I can't wait to post more pictures on social media. And one day, one of these days, I'm just going to bring her on the set. I'm going to bring her here to Soldiers Angels. You never you know. She's going to be here. She's yeah. just going to be helping out. Well, how's, <laughs> more importantly, Thank how's you. Mama doing on day two? All day two, it's great. I got sleep. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> yeah, it's day two. What a concept. <laughs> My goodness. Yeah, all right. It's, 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 yes. Yeah, yeah, I feel great this morning. Good. Well, <laughs> welcome, welcome back. We missed you. I missed you guys too. Thank Aww. you so much. Oh, Thank she means Tiffany. that. That's sweet. Yeah, Thank she you, does. Tiffany. It's right, good 90, to have her back. Yeah, it is good to have her back. Sarah Spivey is in for Justin Horn today, which is awesome right now, and uh, <laughs> doesn't make a, take much of an update to remind us how how bad things are in the rainfall department, I know, does it? I know, and I just wanted to emphasize how badly we need rain. The brown crunchy grass isn't enough. Mm -hmm. Just look at these numbers. So usually May is our rainiest month. We've only seen 36 hundredth of an inch of rain so far. That is more than two inches of rain, uh, a departure from average. So we're two inches of rain in a rain deficit for May, but it's even worse when you look at the year so far. So since January 1st, we've only seen about four inches of rain. That is almost seven inches of rain less than what we usually see by this time of year. We need rain. You know we need rain. And in the forecast, there is a hope for some rain Friday through the weekend. Right now it looks isolated at best, but we're hoping that as we get closer to the weekend, we can refine the forecast and really highlight the areas that have the best chance for rain Friday through the weekend. Part of the reason why we have a rain chance over the weekend is that we have a cool front in the forecast over the weekend too. So that's something to look forward to, but we have to get through the work week and it's going to be hot all work week long into Saturday as well. It's 75 in San Antonio, 79 at Simpson, 75 at Kelly, uh, 74 at JBSA Randolph. Winds are from the south at about 10 miles per hour and we are seeing mostly sunny skies. So temperatures are going to warm up here really quickly. 77 in Pleasanton, 76 in New Braunfels, 72 in Kerrville, 72 in Uvalde, and 75 in Del Rio. One thing you'll notice today is that as we head into the afternoon, some cirrus clouds are going to work their way in from the west. High thin cirrus clouds putting a milky hue to the sky, not cooling us down all that much. In fact, plenty of sunshine is still going to be able to shine through those cirrus clouds, and so it's going to be a hot one. We'll be looking at a high temperature of 98 in San Antonio. That's about 10 degrees above the average of 87. 100 in Castroville, 98 in New Braunfels, 97 in Seguin, 100 in Divine, 97 in Kerrville, and 95 in Bernie. We could once again at least tie a record high temperature for the day. It's also going to be noticeably more windy today than it was yesterday. Winds are going to be from the south gusting up to about 25 miles per hour. Even an occasional gust up to 30 miles per hour is possible in the late evening hours. And because of the gusty and hot conditions, 
There is an elevated risk for grass fire, especially around Bernie, Bandera, Kerrville, Fredericksburg, Lakey, Rock Springs, and Del Rio. So please try to avoid any kind of outdoor burning and be very mindful of sparks uh, that may occur because those sparks could create grass fires, elevated grass fire danger in the hill country, but critical grass fire danger across areas in near San Angelo and up into the panhandle. Here's your KSAT 12 hour forecast, mostly sunny skies through lunch. We're going to be warming up into the upper 80s and winds will be from the south at about 10 miles per hour. The afternoon for the afternoon commute, that's when the peak heat of the day will be. We'll be hitting 98 degrees at 4 or 5 p.m. And then looking ahead to the evening, it's going to stay warm. Temperatures will fall into the 80s this evening, and those winds will be from the south at about 15 miles per hour. I mentioned the cool front that's going to be on the way. It'll be moving through Saturday night, dropping our highs from the 90s into the 80s. But until then, again, we're going to be close to record heat. So we're in for a long stretch of hot weather, but at least there is a temporary end on the horizon of of course, we know that July, June, the summer months are right ahead. So we're just getting started with the heat for the remainder of the summer, but still nice to be able to see a, a little bit of a break from that heat. And we'll be able to update the precipitation forecast too as we get closer to the weekend. Here, here. All right. Thank you, Sarah. Cross your fingers, Spurs fans. NBA draft lottery tonight. The Spurs are hoping they'll have a bit of luck. Hope so. The lottery determines the order of selection for the NBA draft next month. And David Robinson will represent the silver and black in Chicago tonight. We call that a very tall rabbit's foot. Yes. Uh, the Spurs only have a four and a half percent chance of landing the number one pick and a 20 percent chance for the top pick. Lottery begins at seven o'clock on ESPN. But there's always that chance. Yeah, at least there's a chance. 922, about 75 degrees. And when we come back, we are featuring another author that will be at the San Antonio Book Festival this weekend, what his book is about and what he hopes children will learn from it. On a reminder, again, traffic is uh, really kind of a mess still, even though the morning commute is over. I-35 at Judson Road, we still have a working accident. Slow going in both directions, but particularly southbound main lanes and also the frontage road. We're talking again, 35 at Judson. Welcome back 926. We are getting ready for the 10th annual San Antonio Book Festival this weekend. One of the featured authors is a San Antonio man whose first published work centers around a mother and daughter at the Texas Mexico border. Alicia Beretta spoke to the author about why he hopes children of all backgrounds give his book a chance. Mama tells me we have a long way to walk. Inside the notebook keeper, a story of kindness from the border are illustrations of families with big dreams and even bigger struggles ahead of them in an unfamiliar place. The streets are unsafe. We are leaving too. Our home is no longer a home. Have faith, mi vida, mama says. Steven Briseño writes the fictional story of two refugees, Noemi and her mother, and their journey to reach the American dream. The, the whole point of her journey is that she learns to spread kindness no matter where she is, even in the darkest of places. But the focus is also a notebook with hundreds of names inside and the person in charge of the notebook. Yes, it's about a, a real event that happened at the San Ysidro border checkpoint in Tijuana. They, the border officials would say, OK, we can see 50 people today or 60 people. And the notebook keeper would call the next person's or set of people in line. He hopes adults see past the politics and allow their children to, at least for a second, step into the shoes of refugees like Noemi and we lose the fact that there are real human beings involved. And I think that parents that would really see like, what is it like for someone to go through that? The Notebook Keeper is already available for pre-order anywhere books are sold, but it will be this Saturday at 2 p.m. that attendees for the San Antonio Book Festival will have a chance to meet the author. Reporting Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. Of course, there is more ahead on GMSA at 9 including a behind-the-scenes look at Lin-Manuel Miranda's newest Broadway show, and it's not your typical show. But before that, video from inside a local ice house where a shooting took place and what that bar's owner is doing to increase security. And taking a look outside with live cam right now, looking pretty nice at this hour at 76 degrees, but we are warming up for a very warm day. 
We are Stephanie. Um, do I sound like a broken record? I feel like a broken record a little bit, but we could actually break a record high temperature today. Once again, since Saturday, we've either tied or broken a high temperature record each day. Yeah, we're in the middle of a heat wave for sure. Let's take a look outside with live cam. You can see blue skies and 75 degrees. South winds at about 10 miles per hour, and it's a touch humid out there. Uh, dew points are in the upper 60s. And here's okay. This is a cute graphic. I love this graphic so much. This is Fido's forecast. Okay, we don't. We all also want to remember to take care of our pets when it's hot outside, right? So if you're planning on walking the dog this morning or through about lunch, you're going to be fine. But in the afternoon afternoon, you're really going to want to make sure that if you have to walk your dog in the afternoon, it's on the grass because that asphalt temperature will be very hot, close to 140 degrees. So keep that in mind. If it's too hot for the back of your hand, it's too hot for your pup's paws. 98 degrees for the high temperature. It'll be warm in the evening too. So once the sun sets, you should be good to, to walk the dog. No change in the aquifer today, but it's still about 20 feet below the average for the month. And even though there wasn't a daily change the aquifer level, the 10 day average continues to fall and the 10 day average is often what SAWS looks at for water restrictions. So that's an important number to pay attention to. In the pollen count, molds, grass and pecan are present, but in low amounts and we're going to continue with our heat wave through the remainder of the work week into uh, Saturday with high temperatures in the 90s. But you're seeing that right. Looks like we're going to have a bit of a cool down from a cool front moving through on Sunday morning. Morning. Coming up, I'm going to talk about if we could see any rain with that front. And of course, I'll have a neighborhood view of how hot it's going to be around San Antonio. Mark, Steph. Thank you, Sarah. Well, we advise you to wait about 15 or 20 minutes for things to improve at I-35 in Judson. And I give you 33 minutes later. It appears both accidents have not cleared in that area. Uh, we do have some weird clouds or smoke in the background, though. Don't know what's going on with that. But again, situation is approved, uh, especially on the main lanes, both north and southbound. 35 at Judson. The owner of a popular local ice house is crediting his security team for reacting quickly to an early morning shooting that happened this weekend. It was over at Hills and Dales on the northwest side near 1604 and Babcock. The bar's owner says he is also looking at additional upgrades to protect his customers. Patty Santos shows us video from inside the bar as the fight breaks out. The fight kind of started off behind me. Justin Vitek, owner of Hills and Dales Bar, was just feet away from where a brawl and shooting sent his patrons running for cover. A 25-year-old man was rushed to the hospital with life-altering injuries. This is like your worst nightmare. You know, you never want any, anybody to get harmed. His staff is looking at 18 security camera recordings taken inside and outside, trying to figure out how an armed suspect without an ID got into the bar. We're thinking maybe he reached the fence somewhere. Aside from cameras, he also hires security for inside the bar at the gate and also guards on patrol on bikes here along the street overall spending over five hundred thousand dollars a year everybody should be uh, alarmed right uh, that we're hearing more and more incidents like this taking place in san antonio councilman manny pelaya says he's concerned about shooting calls on the rise across the city saturday night police responded to a shooting at lefty's draft house on judson road and sir winston pub on nacogdoches road this goes to show that you know, if you are stubbornly intent on causing trouble, no amount of security will inoculate um, the, the bar or the restaurant or the patrons. Right? VTech says it was one of his security guards that ran to stop the 20 year old suspect not yet identified by police. This could have happened anywhere and, and unfortunately it happened here. Councilman Pelaya says this is a time when taxpayers can have a say on the type of safety investments they would like to see. Right now, City Council is working on next year's budget. If you would like to see more police officers, more streetlights, this is a time to speak up. Patty Santos, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Patty. 936 right now. The trial continuing today for a San Antonio man accused of murder. David Hinojosa is on the trial for the 2017 murder of Joseph Torres. Yesterday in court, the defense filed a motion to have any mention of Hinojosa cutting off his GPS monitor twice while out on bond not be mentioned in front of a jury. Hinojosa testified he did take off his mo monitor once in 2018 and another time in 2020, but never had any intention of actually leaving Texas. I got into an argument with my girlfriend at the time, and she threatened to call the police, so I figured I was going to jail. 
you know what I mean? And I decided to cut the monitor off rather than go at that moment. District Judge Jennifer Pena denied the motion by the defense and allowed the prosecution to show the jury evidence Inahosa is a flight risk. And overdose deaths in the U.S. have officially hit new record levels. That's according to new data released by the CDC. And that trend is here in San Antonio as well. And as Courtney Friedman reports, DEA officials and doctors say the culprit is fentanyl. And drug dealers are targeting kids online. Fentanyl is a synthetic opioid that's dangerously addictive and deadly. Fentanyl is, is 50 uh, times more potent than morphine, 100%. Uh, times more potent than heroin. Two milligrams, the tip of a pencil amount of fentanyl can kill someone. DEA Special Agent Corey D. Handy Sr. says in the last six months, there's been a 48% increase in the seizures of fentanyl in San Antonio, the majority in the form of fake prescription pills. The DEA lab uh, shows that four out of 10 fake pills are laced with the, a lethal dose of fentanyl. The DEA reports 432 overdose-related deaths in Bear County in 2020, 37% from meth and 16% from drugs mixed with fentanyl. A new CDC report shows overdoses in America in 2021 were the highest on record, nearly 108,000 lives lost, 66% related to fentanyl. And this isn't just drug dealers standing on the corner of the street anymore. They find their clients here on social media. And that's why parents need to be hyper aware. So now you have kids that um, if they happen to get a counterfeit pill, whether it's a Xanax, thinking that they're gonna treat their anxiety, whether it's an adult for ADHD, they're in just that. Little do they know, almost all of these counterfeit drugs have fentanyl in them. Dr. Lenoy Galvez is a psychiatrist with Baptist Medical Network and says to look for signs of change in your kids. He's not really bathing, he's not really engaged in terms of family dynamics. Um, if he's actively intoxicated, you'll see the pinpoint pupils. Handy says to check your child's social media accounts. Please, please. Talk to your kids about fake pills, the dangers of fake drugs. Courtney Friedman, KSAT 12 News. San Antonio's long-awaited workforce training program is now open for enrollment. Voters approved using city sales tax dollars to fund SA Ready to Work back in the November 2020 election. And City Hall reporter Garrett Berringer tells us what you need to know if you want to sign up. Ready to Work is ready to go. Ready, the city says, to put San Antonians into certification and degree programs and eventually into well-paying jobs in in-demand fields over the next five years. Manufacturing, information technology, healthcare and biosciences, finance and accounting, those types of industries are what we're focused on, the energy and utility sector. The city's goal, more than 28,000 enrolled, and more than 15,600 into a job. I would consider it a success when a single family is able to change the cycle of poverty and give their children and grandchildren a chance. The city is still wrapping up its first pandemic era jobs program, Train for Jobs SA. One of its participants, Amanda Wright, got trained in accounting and is now part of the advisory board for Ready to Work, which she says will retain aspects of the former. From the resume writing to learning how to dress your etiquette in your interviews, learning how to speak in your interviews so that you're speaking professionally. With enrollment now opened up, training programs could begin as early as July. To be eligible, you have to be a city resident, not currently enrolled in college, and meet specific income thresholds. We have more details on that and how to sign up on KSAT.com. Garrett Berger, KSAT 12 News. Time now is 940, about 76 degrees. You're watching GMSA at 9. And when we come back, Stefania Jimenez is taking us backstage of the new Broadway show performing here in San Antonio. And welcome back to 944. He brought you Hamilton and in the Heights, now Lynn manuel Miranda's latest show, Freestyle Love Supreme, is coming to San Antonio. The Owl City, the latest stop on the national tour, and as Stefania Jimenez is about to show us, this is not your typical Broadway show. <laughs> First off, Freestyle Love Supreme isn't a play. It's also not even a musical. It's basically a hip hop comedy show. And did I mention it's improvised? That means that every single show is different. We spoke with beatboxer Kayla Milady, who's also part of Freestyle Love Supreme, and she says the audience should expect the unexpected. 
You break it down, come on, bump. The show is like nothing you've ever seen before because every single night, this show is completely different. Without the audience members being there, we don't have a show. So every night we come on stage with no script, no prop, no idea what's going to happen next. And we ask the audience uh, for their stories, their suggestions, and their ideas. And the coolest thing is when you come to see our show, whether Lynn is in it or Wayne Brady or special guests like Josh Groban, you're seeing them in a way that you've never seen them before because, you know, they have no idea what's going to happen either. The coolest thing about having such a supportive team like the rest of the group of Freestyle Love Supreme is you really can't make a mistake, right? We'll take a story and let's say we get your mom's name wrong, then it will get turned into a joke uh, that we could use for later in the show. And that's kind of some of our favorite parts is that when you're creating, as long as you don't judge yourself that hard in the moment, then you can always turn these jumbles or blanking out or these um, what other people would call mistakes into a really good joke that almost becomes an inside joke between you and the audience. Be ready to be open and have a good time. Well, the cool thing about our show, it's all volunteer based. So nobody is going to make you tell a story that you don't want to say. And we're always going to uh, take your story and raise it up to the best way that we can. We're going to make you look good. So I think it's just about coming in and enjoying an experience. I mean, especially after the last two years to be able to support and be a part of live theater again is something I know I'll never take for granted. So I really hope that people just come open minded and ready to have a good time. <laughs> Yo, tick, yo, a bump, Santa, tick, Tony, yo, bump, come on, enjoy the flow, freestyle, love supreme, yeah, we on a roll. We'll see you there. You have a few chances to go and check it out for yourself. Freestyle Love Supreme will have six shows at the Empire Theater. For more information, visit ksat.com. Stefania Jimenez, KSAT 12 News. Sarah Spivey's got to be just itching right now. Yeah, to get that involved. looks cool. I know, that that's looks awesome. That's so up you and your husband's alley, it, right? You know, it is. And we love the Empire. The Empire is a really cool theater. Oh, it's a cool venue. space. It I is. saw a show there years ago. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And it is nice to be seeing things coming back a little bit yeah. more to normal yeah. when it comes Fe to the energy. Yeah, feeling a little bit more like normal, isn't it? But uh, not the weather. <laughs> not, <laughs> there you go. Yeah. There you go. I teed it up. I wanted to see if you'd hit mm -hmm. it. There Got it. Go. Yeah. All right, so we are going to be a much hotter than average around San Antonio today as we have been over the last few days. It is sunny and 75 degrees outside. Now, while sunny and 75 may sound really pleasant, the humidity is up there right now. Dew points are in the upper 60s and we're going to get hotter than 75. So take a look out elsewhere. We've got the satellite turned on here so you can see the temperatures and the sky conditions. It's 80 in Pleasanton, 75 in Hondo, 76 in Kerrville. Notice out west, there's some cirrus clouds starting to push in from the west. These cirrus clouds will be with us in the afternoon around San Antonio. But for now, we're looking at clear skies, 74 in Converse, 76 in New Brom. 79 in Castroville. It's 73 in Bernie and 76 in Comfort. We're going to again see uh, mostly clear skies for the majority of the day, but in the afternoon, that's when we'll start to see those wispy cirrus clouds work in from the west. There's even an off chance that one or two storms could traverse those mountains of Mexico and make it to Del Rio later tonight, but we really don't expect it, them to make it at all to San Antonio, so it's going to stay dry in San Antonio and hot. 98 in New Braunfels, 97 for the high in Kerrville, 98 here in San Antonio for the high temperature. That would be the record for the day. 100 in Pleasanton, 100 in Hondo, and 103 plus for folks from Del Rio all the way down to Laredo. It's also going to be noticeably more windy today. We're going to see wind gusts of up to 20 to 25 miles per hour. And up in the hill country, those winds could gust up to 30 miles per hour uh, at times. And it's these areas up in the hill country that we'll see more of an elevated fire danger today. So please try to avoid uh, creating or spreading any grass fires out there. Uh, it's going to be hot and breezy for a good portion of the afternoon. For now, though, through about lunch, we're going to be looking at temperatures warming into the 80s. South winds at about 10 miles per hour. And then that's in the afternoon is when we're going to have the hottest temperatures very close to 100 degrees. We'll be at 98 degrees by about dinner time. I'm not talking about the band. 
90s fans. Okay, we're going to be looking at a cool, uh, warm evening with uh, temperatures falling into the 80s after sunset, so not really cooling off all that much. And again, it will be breezy. Looking at the satellite radar across the state of Texas, it's quiet right now. There are some showers across parts of eastern Oklahoma, but we're still seeing that high pressure system around. It has weakened substantially and it's going to continue to push off to the east, but we're really not going to see a cool down until Sunday. Until then, it's going to stay hot with temperatures well above average, but cooler air will sag in from Canada by about uh, the Saturday night. We're going to see a front move through Texas and it'll be dropping our temperatures, not necessarily to the point of it being cool outside, but it is going to be cooler with temperatures only topping off in the 80s by Sunday. There could be some rain with this system as well, especially Friday night through the weekend. Notice that most of the healthier rains will be in East Texas, but San Antonio will still be on the tail end of that. So we're going to be uh, crossing our fingers for some rain in your backyard Friday through uh, Sunday. But for now, the chance for rain will only be isolated to widely scattered. Otherwise, buckle down for the heat. It'll be with us through Saturday. We'll be back after the break. Tomorrow on GMSA at 9, Katie Science Lab is back on the road. So Katie Blake and David Sears will be visiting with a fourth grade class at Sarah King Elementary. They're going to be learning about density and doing a cool little experiment. Again, that's tomorrow right here on GMSA at 9. And a reminder that early voting is underway for the Texas primary runoff elections. It runs until this Friday. Polling locations will be open from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. And election day is a week from today. So look for more information on our website at ksat.com. Blue skies and temperatures rising at 75 degrees at San Antonio International Airport. We're going to be at 98 this afternoon. That record of 97 set back in 2013. We're going to give it a run for its money today. Winds will gust up to 25 miles per hour from the south, so it's going to be windy. Looking at the forecast over the next few days, let's copy and paste through about Friday, and that's when we'll start to introduce a chance for isolated showers and storms into the weekend as well. And there's some good news, though. Temperatures drop pretty drastically from Saturday to Sunday. Highs will no longer be flirting with the triple digits, but in the 80s. Okay. Or to it. I mentioned the top of the newscast. I was uh, up in Arkansas for my son's college graduation yeah. this past weekend, just outside Little Rock. I don't know how I missed this story because it is hilarious. The man in black has sprung a leak, folks. Yeah, you're <laughs> looking <laughs> you're looking there at a water tower. This is located in Kingsland, Arkansas. Yeah, and, southwest uh, of Little Rock. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Johnny Cash springs a leak after Arkansas water tower is vandalized. That's right. So uh, this is uh, a this was uh, a town, his I hometown, guess, his hometown. hometown. Born, yeah, this yeah. is where he was born mm -hmm. uh, in, in 1932. Somebody shot the tank. Yes. Yeah, and they said somebody shot the tank. It's been leaking for almost a week, and the image of cash apparently letting loose quickly went viral with people driving into town. People can look for their water to be discolored, uh, a, a, a town official said. They said they're going to have to switch to a water line as this tank is repaired. They said water pressure is probably also going to be affected. Yeah, it's going to be a $5,000 repair job, mm -hmm. and they're losing somewhere around $200 in water every day. And they said somebody's facing a, facing a possible felony charge for tampering yeah. with vital operations of the city. Yeah. Hashtag no comment. No comment.